Welcome everybody. Today we are talking about light. I'm so excited to be sharing with you what God has revealed to me about light. So as we are beginning to talk about light, I'd like us to base our discussion on the book of Genesis chapter 1. Um, we will take our first reading from verse 2 and then our second reading from verse 14 all the way down to 16. Now, the first thing that I'd like us to pay attention to is the introduction that we are given in Genesis 1 verse 1, where the word of God introduces us to the world as was before creation. And now we find that at this time the world was void, it was empty, and darkness was on the face of the deep. The word of God also tells us that the spirit of God was hovering on the earth. And the very first thing that God created on the very first day in verse 2 was light. But then in verse 14 on day 4, God goes to create once again light. So what is the distinction? the distinction or the difference between the two lights and what is the significance of the distinction and that is what we are going to be looking at today now before anything the first thing i'd like us to do is to look at the definition of light from a scriptural point of view and also from a spiritual point of view based on our knowledge of who god is and what his word says now, light represents God's presence. And we can safely say this because we know that where light is, darkness cannot be. So it means that if we, we know, I mean, in scripture, we are told that any man who is in Christ, because when you accept Christ, the Holy Spirit then comes into you as you are baptized in the Spirit. And any man who is in Christ is no longer the same because where light is, darkness cannot be. So there is that transformation of the inner man that takes place because of the new occupant within that inner man. Hmm. Now, we also know that light also represents God's will. The word of God tells us that those who do not walk in light do not know where they are going. The word of God also tells us that God's word is a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our, our path. So what, what, what the word of God is essentially saying is that God's word is our guidance of where we need to go. His, his word is like a light in our lives. And that's why he describes those who do not know or who do not walk in the light to not know where they are going. So us as Christians or as children of God, we are then walking within the will or within the light of God. And thereby our destination is therefore defined. We, we know where we are working towards. And this is with specific reference to our eternal life or to heaven, as most people would rather refer to it, our afterlife. Okay. So we also know that God's or light represents God's glory. We find this in scripture. And uh, if you read in the book of Revelations, you will read about how God's glory is assinuated or it's, it's emphasized through light. So God's glory is also represented by light. We also know that light represents life. We also know that light represents wisdom and understanding because light brings forth a vision of or a vision that is unlimited by hidden things. So you are able to see everything. Nothing is no long, longer hidden. Therefore, you are now wise and your understanding is emphasized. So light represents all of these things. It represents God's presence, God's will, God's glory. It represents life, wisdom, and understanding. So now that we know what light represents, now we are able to go and distinguish between the two lights that are referred to in the book of Genesis. Now, children of God, in the very beginning, before all creation, before anything, God 
makes known that his presence is there because the spirit is hovering. But he, the first thing that he creates is a light. The word of God says in verse 1 that there was nothing, there was no life in the world. The world was empty, it was void. There was nothing on it. So God's creation or God taking the very first step to be the creation of light is a statement or an announcement that his presence is now here. Because at first the world was empty, there was nothing. But upon his arrival, to make known that now God has arrived, he brought forth his life, his light that brings forth life. You understand? So God was making a statement that I, God, am now here. Because where God is, there is light. So God was saying, listen, there was nothing here before, but I am now here. And the statement or the sign to show God's presence was the light. That is why he says the light. God created a light. He looked at it and he saw it was good. And then he said day and night. So first, God introduces himself and makes a statement of his arrival, makes a statement of his presence, and makes a statement of the life he has brought to this the, the life he has brought to this dead, empty world. That's the first light he creates. It's the very first thing is he brings himself and he makes a statement that now I am here. And because I am here, life is here. And you can see me because there is light. And darkness and light cannot be. That's why he divides the light from the darkness. But let's, let's, let's look further at verse 14. It says there, Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens. Two now tells you why he wants the lights in the heavens. So that they can divide the day from the night. You see, so it means that the first division that happened in verse 2 was a division or a segregation of power or authority. He wanted you to know that I, God, am represented by light. But I'm not the only force that is existing here. There is me, light, and then there is darkness, which is the enemy, which is evil forces. So he segregates and he divides them because God is here, yes, but so are the evil forces. So is the enemy. Hmm. So we, we, we need to understand what is happening here. And there's somewhere that I'm taking you. Please just bear with me. Now, now he says, same verse 14. He says, and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. Hmm. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Look at the difference in the purpose of the light. With the light that was created in verse 2, God does not attach a purpose to it because it's his presence. Do you understand? It's himself. He was making himself known and making a statement that I, God, am now here. Therefore, light is here. Light has come. But now with the lights that he's creating, these lights are specifically to bring light to the, to shed light to the earth. And he goes on to attach an actual, um, uh, to attach an actual duty to them. Now he's saying these lights have a purpose. And then what is that purpose? Verse 17, God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on earth. So now it's to give us light so that you can see your hand, you can see everything that is around you. Secondly, to divide the light. You no, know, he says there, secondly, to rule over the day and over the night. So there is authority attached to these lights. And then he says there that 
that also the last thing is to divide the light from the darkness so firstly is for us to be able to see so they provide the light that you now use to see when the sun goes up and you can see everything without actually switching on a light bulb you know so and then if you go out at night there are stars and then you can see fairly so but then he also adds another purpose which is to rule over the day and over the night look at this he says the greater light will root will rule the day and the lesser light will rule the night similarly as in verse 2 where he creates light and separates or he divides it from darkness he gives greater authority to the light that rules the day greater light greater ruling the day you know he divides it so that the day is even longer you know the days are longer than nights are and then he, he gives the lesser light to rule the night listen so god has actually this redefines god being in control because where we have assumed that god is only in control where it's his power ruling god is in control even when the enemy is ruling and and by that i i want to clarify myself and say that when 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 anything happens to you that is being driven by the enemy or by evil forces god is still in control they have control but their control is still submissive it's still under the control of god god is overall in control all the time that is why we see in the book of job when satan wanted to touch job he had to first ask for permission which means that he cannot do anything without the permission of God. So even this lesser light that rules during the night is still fully under the control and under the, 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 the leadership or the guidance or the command even of God. That is a very important fact that you need to understand that God is making the statement right from the beginning that he, even though he has created light and he has created the greater light to rule during the day and the lesser light at night, it is him who has given that command. It is him who has given that authority. So nothing can act outside of him. And then lastly, he has divided the light from the darkness. There is a distinction between the darkness and a distinction between the night. Children of God, light is so important for us to understand what it represents and what it means in our lives. But why so? Because when the word of God says in Matthew 5 verse 14, in fact, I want us to actually go and read it. Matthew 5 verse 14. I'm just quickly opening it on my side. It reads here as follows, and I'm using the MacArthur Study Bible. Matthew 5 verse 14 reads as follows. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father whom is in heaven. Children of God, now, now you understand light and what light represents. So when God says to you, now in the book of Matthew chapter 5, he says, you are the light of the world. But what does it mean to be the light of the world? It means that within you, you have God's presence, you have God's glory, the life, wisdom, and understanding that comes with the light is within you. And that is why he says that a, 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 a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. When you have God's presence within you, when you have God's glory within you, let me just explain something quickly. When we are talking about God's presence, we are talking about God's presence and God's glory, are, they go hand in hand. And I want to explain to you this by saying that God's presence is God is here. But God being here, nothing can be the same because nothing remains calm in the presence of God. Everything has to react because there is now a strength, a power that is greater, that is more supreme than anything here. And we see that by by the glory of God now being made evident. So God's presence is made evident by his glory because God's glory is effectively 
the enabling power of God. And I would like to give a practical example. Like if you go to a church service and you are worshiping and then you can feel the move of the Holy Spirit. And then you can con confidently say that the Spirit of God is here. You can confidently say that the presence of God is with us. We are not alone. And how do you know that you are not alone? Because the enabling power, there is something in the atmosphere. There is something that is happening. And, and you cannot ignore it. You cannot sit tight because it is happening. And it is happening because of the presence of God. You understand? So when we are saying that you are the light of the world, we are saying within you, you carry the very presence of God. And as a result, that glory of God, which is now the enabling power of God, where now you, the word of God says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Remember, God and his spirit are one. When God now comes into you, his, his spirit coming into you, his light, his power, everything about God then comes into you. Do you understand? So you now carry, you are, you are embodying the power. You are embodying, you are embodying the glory of God. So much so that when you say nothing is impossible with God, you're actually saying nothing is impossible with God who is in me. When you're saying greater is he who is in the who is in me than who he, he is in the world, you're actually saying greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. And you have a new understanding to that saying that now when you are saying that, oh my God, I don't know if you are getting it the way that I'm saying it, but when you say, when God is saying to you effectively that you are the light of the world, he's saying within you, you are carrying my presence. And you are not just carrying my presence. My presence comes with my glory. And my glory comes with my, <laughs> my glory is my power, my enabling power. So much so that because I'm within you, wherever you are, because of me in you, because of that light, it, the word of God says a city set on a hill cannot be hidden, meaning that n people cannot ignore what is inside you and what is bubbling out of you because of what is essentially inside you. He's saying that because you are the light of the world, no one will be able to ignore you. No one will be able to not notice you because of what I will be doing within you. My glory will be seen through you. My power will be made evident through you. Who I am will be made evident through you. What I am able to do will be made possible, will be made known through you. So you carrying the light is not you shining brightly. It is me within you. It is in effect everything that comes with me within you. That is that is how now God takes to a new level when he says, arise and shine in Isaiah 60 for your light has come because now you don't an understanding. You're not shining. You're not arising and you're not shining just like this light bulb was shining now. No, your, the glory of God is literally being seen through you, meaning that his presence, his glory, his power, his might, his godness. Everything that you have ever thought or understood about God is within you. And if you can understand what you are embodying, if you can understand, that is why God says there, he says you need to understand that even a lamp, when they've lit in it, they don't put it under a basket. They put it out so that it can give light to all to see. So it means that you will need to be lifted up. You don't understand the revelation. So that everyone can see. Everyone can draw and everyone can learn from who you are. From what God has placed within you. Because the light within you will be shining so much. Do you understand what God is saying to you? When he's saying you are the light of the world. He is not saying you will shine brighter like the other stuff. He's saying you don't understand. You will be on a hill that everyone can see you because of me and what I will be doing 
through you. What I will be doing within you. God's presence, God's might, God's ability, who God is will be made known and will be made manifest, will be made seen through you. You are the light of the world. Don't you understand that you being the light of the world means you, you embody all of this greatness that God has given and is entrusted to you. You have God's presence within you. You have his glory, his power within you. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. You are the light of the world. Today you may be nobody. You may have nothing. People walk past you. They do not acknowledge you. You do not even exist. But just like God said in Isaiah 60, Arise, get up, shine, for your light has come. And God's glory, God's presence, God's power, people are going to be reminded that God lives in your life. People are going to be reminded that God is still able through your life. He is doing the impossible in your life. Know who you are. Know what you carry within you. And don't take God's words for granted. When he says you are the light of the world, you are the light of the world. And just like a city set on a hill cannot be hidden, just like they don't light a lamp to put it under the bed, but they put it in a place where it's visible and where it sheds light to everyone, you will shed light to everyone. Everyone is going to look to you for light. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but you are the light of the world. Know it, own it, and trust God for it. Be blessed.